Hi, this is Colin from Watch Off The Cuff. Uh, today I'm answering a question from Danny. I think it would just be easier if I just did a quick video to answer your question. Uh, and uh, Danny's just kind of getting into the repair hobby type thing and he had a question and he said, um, if I were to buy like one pack of crystals, um, you know, what would I order? Where would I get them from as an amateur or just starting out? Um, and would it be like a flat crystal, dome, double dome, mineral like what what where do i start what do i buy so <laughs> there's a lot of different crystals out there is is what the basic answer to begin with is i'll tell you maybe what my journey was and then i'll tell you the lessons i learned along the way so um what i originally used to do and here's maybe a good example uh, maybe there's a few that are the same size i would whenever i had to buy a crystal i would guesstimate the size let's say it's a flat mineral crystal and i think it's 30 millimeters. So I would buy the 30 millimeter and I would buy the 30.1 millimeter and I would buy the 29.9 millimeter. And then if the fit wasn't right, then um, then I would be covered. I think I talk about this in one of the other videos where I do a show, or sorry, where I show uh, how to step-by-step -step remove and replace a, a crystal and what my process is. Um, uh, and then sometimes I even went two steps because what happens is the top of a, even a flat crystal, like the bottom square and then the top of it has got a bevel around the top. And once, it, if the crystal's just scratched and it's still in the crystal, if you take calipers, it can be hard to get a really, really good measurement. So um, anyway, so I just buy one or of above blow. The problem becomes uh, is, you know, what thickness do you get? So I um, was seeing a friend in another city and we got talking about watches. He said, oh, by the way, there's a jewelry store that's like closing a block from here. And I thought to myself, hey, I'll stop in there and see if I can buy up whatever they've got for cheap. So I went in there and they said, you're wrong. We're not closing. Who told you that? But we used to have a watchmaker here. That watchmaker is gone. And you know what? We were probably just gonna throw it out. We've got some crystals. You just want some crystals? I said, I said, absolutely amazing. And I said, can you give me money? They said, no. And I said, listen, let me at least, there was two of them. I said, let me leave $10. You could buy each other a coffee and a donut. Like as a thank you, whatever. So this is what I ended up getting in the beginning. And you can see it's in a little, like little tray things. And it's one millimeter depth. And there's some point nines as well. Uh, across like, you know, they start at uh, as little as 10 millimeters and then go up beyond 30 millimeters in diameter. So it was, it was a good start. And then I would just add in what I've got. You can see there's different colors in there, depending on what supplier I got them from at the time. There's red sleeves and white sleeves. And some of these sleeves look like they could have been around from the 60s. Hey, they don't go bad. So that's how I started. And then, um, you know, I did it for a bunch of years. I started out as an enthusiast and then later got some training and then did it full time. So um, I ended up then just getting an assortment because it just was such a time waste to be able to reorder and reorder and then get the stuff shipping in and waiting where otherwise, I and this happens now, I can have somebody come to have a crystal repair on a Saturday morning and then I just I can just do it right there because I have like almost every crystal in stock. So what I did next, outside of getting a one millimeter depth, most modern watches are not one millimeter. They're usually like 1.5 to 2.5 is probably the sweet spot. So I ended up getting a 1.5 assortment and it looks like this. It's kind of in a generic box. And I still have some surplus back before I had it. So these little blue things, again, from a different supplier. Um, and then as I use them up, I do it. And then what I'll do is I typically just keep the sleeve, the master sleeve, and I'll just refill it, number one, so it's all red, you know, just so it's all say, but um, uh, I'll just refill it as I go. So this is a flat mineral crystal assortment that has everything from, I should put my glasses on, from 24.1 millimeter diameter all the way up to 40.0 millimeter. So that covers just about everything. So I did that first, and then later um, I ended up getting, uh, if I can close that up again, I ended up getting a two millimeter depth one in a full assortment, a 2.5, and I think that I also have three millimeter depth. I think that I ended up getting the three mil depth kit like maybe in the last year, like it might be less than it might be seven or eight months, maybe even, I'm just, you lose track of time. Uh, so that's been great. So I think that most, most watches are flat if you were to do like general, and then you have to say, okay, it's probably gonna be modern watch is gonna be 1.5 or two mil, you know? And then of course, I gotta tell you that and the first one you get in or the next project you do is gonna be 2.5, but it's just, it, there's no way around. You're never gonna guess. Um, there aren't a lot of single dome crystal watches. It's usually like, for example, if you take the, um, 
SNA 411 from Seiko. Uh, it's like the Seiko's version of the Navitimer. It's got a very detailed, it's got the logarithmic scale around like, you know, the bezel type thing, like a, like a Brightly Navitimer. Um, so the detail, so they put a, a single dome because it acts as a magnifier. There, there's not many that, that are like that. So it's kind of like far and few between. So I wouldn't stock the single dome. Uh, we, to cover all the, cover, it would just be crazy. Um, same thing with double dome. I think the problem with double dome is there are uh, a lot, a lot of different variations. And, you know, what, how deep is the dome? Like I usually try to measure it. And then even sometimes I'll get like a medium or a very high dome. And I'm still guessing when I actually fit the crystal and prop everything out. And depending on the repair process, you want to make sure you have a reasonable replacement before you smash out the crystal that may only be scratched for a customer. Because, you know, they come in with a scratch and try to fix it. And you go, oh, now you can't use it at all. We just blew out the crystal. I couldn't find one to fit. So I always try to be careful about knowing I can get the, a reasonable replacement before I go to a situation where I can damage the watch. So... I would not do double dome either because there's too many. Like there's very thin double domes that they cover depending on if you get like, I think of like that Nomo style that like Bauhaus, like kind of really minimalist. They'll have like a really, really long, a really, really large, um, oh, my phone's ringing. Hey, I'm doing a video on YouTube right now. Can I call you back? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, bye. <laughs> Mark will mind. I've known him for years. Anyway, so um, double dome. Uh, don't do it. I, I, I lost track of my thoughts here. Uh, okay, so yeah, you're never going to pick one that's going to be right. So I just buy those as I need. And I would do the same thing, you know, maybe in a different couple of different depths and then um, and then at a bunch of diameter or like go up a, si a size or two in diameter down to. So the other question, do you stock sapphires? Okay, so yeah, maybe. Um, you could pick some very common sizes. Uh, I think it's, it's, again, it's still, it's still very hard to know, like maybe like a 30 or a 31 or a 32, uh, might be common if you're taking a look at like a 40, uh, like a 40 millimeter watch and we're going to lose five mil on each side and the crystal might be, uh, might be 30 mil. Um, the thing about the Sapphire, and I get a lot of people say I've got this mineral, I'm just, can we upgrade it to Sapphire? is that the mineral crystal crystals are available in 0.1 millimeter increments. So I can get almost anything to fit where the sapphires come in 0.5 millimeter increments. So there's a chance that say, for example, I think it's a 30 millimeter crystal and get the other one out. I put it and it's too loose or it doesn't fit correct. My only option is to go up a half mil or down a half mil. And that's a like, that's a lot depending on what the actual size was. So that can be, uh, that can be a problem. So I usually just order uh, the sapphires as I need it. Sometimes I'll go a size up if I'm really unsure or whatever, but at 0.5 millimeters, we can usually dial it in. It might also be that the watch doesn't have or has a custom sapphire crystal that was cut to be like 30.2 millimeter in diameter and you're gonna have a hard time. You're gonna have to like get a custom uh, cut. The other thing is that the mineral crystals if you buy them in bulk can be fairly inexpensive. Uh, so it's not gonna like break the bank. I think that a, a box like this, maybe, I'm trying to think how many pieces are in here. Uh, I'll have to take a look how many pieces. A lot of pieces, uh, 160 pieces in the box. And I'm thinking I can get that for less than 200 bucks. Like, I think, you know, it's been a while. And I don't have a good wholesale. I don't currently have them on my website. I'm not selling them. I'd love to. Uh, if someone from Hong Kong in the crystal business is watching this, uh, I would love to import CDs and put them on my store. Just, you know, just putting it out there. Uh, so anyway, so the, the Sapphires can literally be, at wholesale, can literally be sometimes 15 times the cost of a single mineral crystal. So it gets very expensive. And you can get away with it on the mineral crystal because it's, it's inexpensive enough that it's worth it to have it and it streamlines things. But the, the sapphire is so expensive and it's very hard to dial in what you're going to use anyway that, you know, it, it becomes prohibitive. I've chosen not to do it, right? Maybe that'll change. I mean, at the beginning, I thought I, I was just going to order the mineral crystals one at a time and slowly build a, a collection of them as I bought, you know, as I went. And it just, in the end, it just made sense to just buy, you know, just buy the collection. The other thing that I do is I end up having another kit, uh, which is the eye gaskets, the clear gaskets. So this is like, uh, how many pieces? This is like 53 types, uh, 265 pieces. Um, if that if that clear gasket is, um, uh, is, is damaged, right? Quite often you can reuse the, I don't have to put in a new gasket very often. Um, unless they've like smashed out the crystal and it's gone and maybe the, the, or the crystal's gone and the gasket went with it. 
Um, but if it's just a scratch crystal, you can get it out, clean it, put it back in, and then you know you've got a perfect fit as well. These also are in 0.5 millimeter increments. So um, again, if you have like a, a crystal seat that doesn't exactly fit that, like this isn't a total solution for that, for that problem. Anyway, uh, the only other thing that I ended up stocking, and I've got a few other like kind of oddballs, uh, which is I ended up getting some old like GS crystals. So I've got some like uh, domed acrylic crystals in a bunch of sizes. But this is one of these things like it came in a lot where I bought some like vintage equipment. It might have been when I bought my vintage staking kit back in the day, like on eBay, like who knows, like 10 years ago. Um, and it kind of came with the lot. Um, it's nice to have to say that I have it, but I've actually never used anything out of this. So again, it's one of these things where sometimes the things about watch parts are is that they're 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 useless until you need them and then they're like invaluable that you've got them right but in the meantime you're like what do i do with all the stuff you know so uh but that covers like general projects do flat mineral crystal uh, if you're doing mineral for crystal for mineral crystal and um and that usually covers it uh what else am i going to say about that um so we covered the oddballs i do have a couple of sapphire crystals that i would bought for for various projects there's like a 31 and there's a 28.5, both of them are 1.5 millimeter. Um, yeah, so I do, I still have a few, like whatever the situation was. But other than that, I've got a couple of single, or there's a uh, double dome, a couple of double domes that I have floating around. You, build, you end up building a collection over time. But anyway, Danny, I hope that answers your question. Um, I, there's a bunch of people that sell the crystals. I, I've rarely seen the kits, and I've had these kits long enough. I, 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 don't, I can't remember where I got them from way back in the day. I could have got them from overseas. I could have got them from Hong Kong. I could have got them from Canada, you know? So there is a company called Perrin that's in, in Canada here that's got a bunch of stuff um, and uh, great people. And then in the U.S., there's a whole bunch. Like there's like Esslinger and then um, uh, I think there's like Jules Borgen or something. There's a whole bunch. If you look it up, like you're going to be able to find the crystals depending on where you are in the world, Danny. Um, anyway, I hope that answers your question a little bit. Um, anyway, uh, thanks. That's probably a little bit of a rant, but if you're looking at well, as an enthusiast, what am I going to stock in terms of crystal? Um, then yeah, that's, uh, that's what I suggest. Cheers until next time.